The Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, praise the Lord, this is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I'm sure glad you could join us for another Netcast today as we get into some really important things from the Word of God, and it's going to be a blessing to you because it is the Word of God. God's Word is truth. Jesus said in John 17, 17, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy Word is truth. And it is truth. It is the power of God. It is the Word of God. came out of God's own mouth. So it's very, very important to us. We're going to be getting into the Word here in just a moment. Before I do, though, I want to talk about speakfaith.tv. You know, I mention it every program, but I really want to mention it this time because we have updated several things on speakfaith.tv. We have added Lynn and Kathy Mink's program. We have added Joyce Myers' program. So more than ever, speakfaith.tv is kind of a a one-stop shop, so to speak, for you to get all of your Word of Faith ministers that are on Roku. And, uh, of course, they're right there on speakfaith.tv. Now, you may have noticed that we have changed our intro a little bit. We have added some uh, nicer uh, new lower thirds, which I think uh, just look a lot better, a lot cleaner. And uh, we just changed some things around with the program to make it uh, a higher quality program. And so I trust that you're enjoying those. But now talking about speakfaith.tv, you know, uh, we I rewrote the code for it and I've submitted it to uh, Roku for full approval. There's still a couple little tweaks coming, but the programming is pretty much the way it will be. I've just changed a few images that will be updated when they update the site. So uh, it, it has the, the new speakers out there. So I encourage you to go check those out and start listening to these excellent programs that are teaching the Word of God. Amen. And then, of course, Word of Faith Radio, WOFR.org. I encourage you to check out Word of Faith Radio as always because there's always excellent Word of Faith teaching and great music. I tell you, Brother Harold picks out some really great music for us to listen to that will inspire you and uplift you. And so I encourage you to check out Word of Faith Radio as well. All right, let's get into the Word today. We're going to go to Mark 11. Surprise, surprise. Mark 11. Uh, the great scripture on faith and how to use God's kind of faith. So let's go there. Mark eleven twenty, And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Now you remember this fig tree was the fig tree that Jesus had cursed the day before, 24 hours before this, the, the morning before. As he went by, he saw this fig tree and he decided, well, I'll go check and see if it's got some fruit on it. So he kind of left the path, went out to where the fig tree was. And, it, and even though it had leaves, which indicated it should have fruit, there was no fruit on the tree. So Jesus said to the tree, I notice, he spoke to the tree and said, No man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. And it says the disciples heard him say it. So he wasn't mumbling it. He wasn't just frustrated and said, stupid tree. No, he spoke directly to the tree. And the next morning, 24 hours later, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God, or... Other translations put it this way, have God's kind of faith. Now, what do you mean by God's kind of faith? The kind of faith that you use when you speak the word of God. The words coming out of Jesus' own mouth were the word of God. Remember, he said, I don't say anything that I don't hear my father say. I don't do anything 
that I don't see my father do. And of course, he's God manifest in the flesh anyway. So of course, when he spoke to that fig tree and said, no man eat fruit of you hereafter forever, that was the word of God. He spoke it out of his own mouth. And that's how God uses his words to use his faith. He speaks words, the word of God, and it comes to pass. You say, well, yeah, but Dr. Bill, that's God. I mean, okay, Jesus, as you said, was God manifested in the flesh in his earthly ministry. God was God when he said, let there be light, and there was light. I mean, so? <laughs> well, here's the big point. Jesus is telling the disciples here, have this kind of faith. Use this kind of faith. Speak words from the word of God to use the faith of God. Now, let's see if that's not what he's talking about here. He says, have faith in God or have God's kind of faith. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. He will have whatever he says. Now, it's the same thing with God. He has whatever he says. Yeah, but Dr. Bill, that's God. Okay, but remember Jesus said, use God's kind of faith. Have God's kind of faith. And how do you do it? You do it by speaking the word of God. You speak words. Now, you don't speak just any old words. You know, I mean, you got to speak words that are the word of God. You've got to use God's word to speak things that you want to come to pass. But your words are important. You know, the Bible says that life and death are in the power of the tongue. The words that we speak, according to James chapter 3, sets in motion the cycle of natural events. Now, it says, sets, uh, you know, the, the uh, well, let's go read it. <laughs> I don't want to try to quote it, but I'll probably misquote it. You know me, I like to get in there and read the actual scripture as it is written, praise the Lord, and that's the way it should be. Uh, James chapter 3, let's go to... Where shall we start? I keep backing up further. Let's just go to verse 1. James chapter 3, verse 1. My brethren, be not many masters, or teachers, is what the Greek says here, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation, or judgment, because we are teaching the word of God. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, with his words, the same is a perfect man, or mature. The word perfect there doesn't mean squeaky clean perfect. It means mature. And able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great are large, uh, and are driven of fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm or rudder. You know, the rudder, as you turn it, steers the ship. Whithersoever the governor listeth. That's good King James, isn't it? Whithersoever the governor listeth. In other words, wherever the captain wants it to go, he has them change the rudder, and that will change the direction of the ship. Uh, verse 5. Even so, the tongue is a little member. The tongue, your words. It's a little member, but boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among your members, that it defileth the whole body. And here it is, and sets on fire the course of nature. That's what the King James says. Sets on fire the course of nature. Literally, what this is talking about is the cycle. That's what it talks about if you look at the Greek. The cycle of natural events in your life are set in motion by your tongue. Let's keep reading. And it, the tongue, is set on fire of hell. See, that's what Satan would try to do is get a hold of your words and have you speak against yourself. 
Now you might say, well, Dr. Bill, I'd never speak against myself. Oh, really? How many times have you heard on TV that it was flu season or cold season and you said out of your mouth, well, I guess I'm going to catch colds that time of year again. Well, do you want a cold? Is that your desire? Well, no, Dr. Bill, that's not my desire. Then why are you speaking it against yourself? You're asking, in effect, for a cold. Well, I'm going to get one. See, you are claiming it. You are receiving it by the words you're saying. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, you might say, well, that doesn't have anything to do with anything. Yes, it does. Because you set in motion the cycle of natural events. <coughs> Excuse me. You get a little something caught in your throat. You set in motion the cycle of natural events when you speak words out of your mouth. There are a lot of people that say, well, you know, I'm going to get my car one of these days. I'm going to have a car wreck. Well, why speak that on yourself? Why claim it? Why receive it? You see, literally, your words are actually being set in motion by Satan who is tempting you to speak words of doubt and unbelief. He's putting pressure on you to speak against yourself and set in motion the cycle of natural events in your life. Now, I'm going to go back over to, to our scripture in uh, Mark 11. Get back there. I took a little side journey there, but that's okay. We needed that side journey to stay on course, stay at tracking here. But let's look at Mark 11, back in verse 24. Therefore, Jesus said, I say unto you, what things soever you desire... When you pray, believe you have received them, and ye shall have them. Now, when are you supposed to believe that you have received? Not a trick question. I'll just wait for a minute here. <laughs> you believe you receive when you pray. Well, when did you pray? Well, that was in the past, wasn't it? Because you prayed whatever it was you prayed, and you believed you received when you prayed in the past, right? And you shall have whatever you said, okay? Now, getting this sequence of events down is critical. First, you have a desire. Then you go to the Word of God and find out what the Word has to say about that thing. Then you speak God's word and return it back to him in prayer. Remember uh, last time we read Isaiah 55 talking about returning God's word to him. And then when you return God's word to him, it shall not return unto him void, but it shall accomplish that which he intends it to accomplish. So we speak God's word back to him. Now let's use an example here. Let's say you have symptoms of sickness or disease in your body. And so you find the scripture where it says in 1 Peter, or excuse me, 1 Peter. Yeah, 1 Peter, I was right, 2.24. Got the old mind going here, tracking where it is. 1 Peter 2.24 says, By his stripes, by Jesus' stripes, we were healed. Past tense. Well, if we were healed, then we are the healed, right? Amen. So we take that scripture and we say, Father God, I receive my healing. As you pray here, you're praying God's word back to him. Because Jesus bore my sicknesses. He carried my diseases. And by his stripes, we were healed. So you return the scripture to God. You speak God's word back to him. Now, at that point, you have prayed, past tense, right? At that point, you stand on what you have prayed. You believe you have received what you have prayed. Now look, 
believe you received it at that moment. When did you get healed? When you prayed. Well, yeah, but I, I still have symptoms in my body. Don't let that bother you. Don't let that affect you. Don't look at yourself and say, I'm still weak. No. The Word of God says, let the weak say, I am strong. That goes back to this principle of speaking the Word of God in order for it to come to pass in your life. So you may feel weak physically, but you say with your mouth, I am strong. That's what God tells us to do. Now, God tells us to do that in his word. A lot of people say, well, I'm, I'd be lying if I said I was strong when I feel weak. Well, then God shouldn't have said, when you're weak, say you're strong. Wouldn't he, wouldn't he know you would be lying? No. There's a principle at work here. The principle is, you're not reporting on <coughs> excuse me, how you feel physically at the moment. You are claiming with your mouth the promise of God that you are to be made strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. Another scripture says, the Lord is the strength of my life. I've been confessing that ever since I got out of the hospital. The Lord is the strength of my life. If I get up and I start walking from point A to point B, and I feel myself getting weaker, I'll say out loud, the Lord is the strength of my life. I'll, I may follow it up with a scripture that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, I'm laying hold with my words on a promise of God. The promise of God is strength. The promise of God is He is our strength. The promise of God is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So how do I lay hold on that strength? I speak words that enforce strength in my life that in effect strengthen me because I'm obeying the Word of God. I'm doing the Word of God. It's the same way, a same principle is used in other areas. Matter of fact, the same principle is used when you got born again. After all, what does Romans chapter 10 verses 8, 9, and 10 say? What saith it? The Word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the Word of faith, which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, first thing, confess Jesus is your Lord. Second thing, believe God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. Same principle. You speak the word of God back to him. You receive it by faith. You walk it out and you're saved. That's how it works. That's the way the things of God work. Okay? So it's the same thing with healing. You go find scriptures that say you've been made strong. You go find scriptures that say you're the healed of the Lord. You go find scriptures that say, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Okay? Then you speak those words out of your mouth which brings it into your life and sets in motion the cycle of natural events in your life for it to come to pass, to become into manifestation. Now that's what we're all after when we pray is the manifestation. And that's what Jesus is saying here. He says, let's go back and read it, verse 24, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire... When you pray, believe you receive them when you pray. Believe you receive them right at that moment. And ye shall have. The shall have is a future tense, isn't it? 
The believe you receive when you pray is a right now present tense. So you believe you receive right now. Dr. Bill, when were you healed? Right now when I prayed. You don't look healed. You don't sound healed. You look like you don't feel healed. No, I don't care about any of that. I have set in motion the cycle of natural events and my body will respond to it. I'll get stronger. Symptoms will go away. I mean, when I was in the hospital, they told me my organs were failing. They told me my kidneys were failing. They told me my liver was failing. They told me my heart was failing. I said, no. I don't receive that report. I receive the report of the Word of God that says I've been made whole, that I'm healed, that God is the Lord that healeth me. I laid hold on that by faith. I begin to confess that. I'm the healed of the Lord. Every cell and every organ of my body functions perfectly, just as God designed it to function. I am the healed of the Lord. I receive my healing by faith. What happened? My kidneys begin to function properly. My heart begin to function properly. My liver, which wasn't functioning well enough to keep the fluid from gathering around my gut... They had to do a procedure called paracentesis where they drain the fluid off every few days. My liver started functioning again. Well, they scratched their heads. Oh, this isn't supposed to happen. It's, it's not curable. But I don't have the fluid around my gut anymore. I don't have to go have paracentesis. I'm getting stronger every day. What I said, what I prayed began to come to pass because I made a decision to believe and receive. Now, there's a lot of people say, well, Dr. Bill, I, you know, that sounds awfully arrogant that you decided to believe to receive. See, if I didn't decide to believe to receive and stand on the Word of God, I would not have had. Amen? Amen. I wouldn't have had the manifestation. Now, the manifestation is ongoing. Okay? It's like Jesus has, you know, he prayed for people and it said they begin to amend from that very hour. In other words, they started getting better from that very hour, but they didn't get better instantly. There are plenty of people he prayed for that did get better instantly. That's called a miracle. A miracle is an instantaneous superseding of the natural by the supernatural. Okay? Well, it's just as miraculous, though, to receive your healing by faith and begin to amend from that very hour. Let me share something with you that Brother Keith Moore said, pastor of Faith Life Church in Branson, uh, Missouri, and also Sarasota, Florida. He flies back and forth and pastors both churches. Both of them call uh, uh, Faith Life Church. But the thing is, Brother Keith Moore made an interesting statement that I really grabbed a hold of. He said, God designed the human body to heal itself. I want you to think about this. Your body, if you get a cut on your finger, that cut will close up and a scab will form that will keep it sealed from bacteria that might try to attack it and get in there. And over time, you begin to amend and you heal up. And it gets to the point that the scab goes away and there's not even a scar left. You know, I've cut my finger and there's not even any scars right there. Okay? You say, well, big deal. So you healed up. That's right, but his point was God instituted healing into the human body by design. He is the Lord that healeth thee. Remember, I said last time, the very first covenant name that God gave to mankind, told mankind about was, I am the Lord that healeth thee. That's been his nature from the very beginning. So he designed healing into our bodies. What he does when he heals us supernaturally, now listen to this, this is what Dr. Keith Moore said that really struck me. 
He just turns up the healing capabilities. It's supernatural. There's no doubt about it. It's not just your body's natural healing. Because the doctors told me your, your liver can't regenerate itself. Your organs can't regenerate themselves. You're just stuck with it. Matter of fact, they told me I had a week to live. Told me to just go live in hospice till I died. But no, I believed that I received my healing. I began to amend from that very hour. I got better. And I got better. And I got better. And God turned up the healing inside me. That ability that he put in every single human being. And my liver got better. And my kidneys got better. And my heart got better. And I'm getting stronger every day. You say, well, Dr. Bill, that's great, but I just don't know if I could do that. Yes, you can. You can make the decision to apply your faith in the Word of God and begin to speak words of faith out of your mouth. See, this is the Word of faith that we preach. Words matter. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Use your words to speak life to your body, life to your circumstances. That's how you do it. That's how it works. This is how faith works. Speak the word of God and see it come to pass in your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we're out of time. Going to have to go. But let me share this with you. You can write me here at our address, Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina. The zip code is 2726. Or 27262. I'll get it. My regular zip code at my house is 27265. So I try to say that. But it's 27262 is the P.O. box. All right. It's right there on the screen. At any rate, or you can write me at my email address. The email address is Dr. Bill, D R B I L L, at WOFM. Of course, you can also check out our website, www wfm.org we've got articles there we've got teaching there we've got all kinds of great stuff for you to receive from and i encourage you to check that out as well because it will be a blessing to you now begin to speak the word of god over your life day in and day out and watch it come to pass in your life remember until next time to fulfill the word of god The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.